Quantum mechanics sometimes looks like an assorted mix of weird stuff. There's wave particle duality where quantum objects sometimes look like little compact particles and sometimes like spread out waves. There's superposition where the object seem to be two things at once. There's the uncertainty principle, which says that the universe seems to conspire to stop us from knowing every detail of a quantum object. And then there's entanglement. Albert Einstein famously described this as spooky action at a distance, where doing something to one of a pair of entangled particles seems to instantly affect the properties of the other, no matter how far away it is. Now, the truth is that None of these descriptions of quantum phenomena is quite right. They're all really just efforts to use our everyday language to talk about things that can't quite be described by it. That's especially true of entanglement, which is not spooky action at a distance at all. It's something that is difficult to describe with our everyday intuitions. But it's worth trying to understand it because, as Erwin Schrodinger said, it is the characteristic trait of quantum mechanics that enforces its entire departure from classical lines of thought. In addition, entanglement is the key ingredient of the newfangled technologies we keep hearing more and more about. Super powerful quantum computers and uncrackable data encoding using quantum cryptography. It's about to become very real for everybody. Imagine the particles are electrons, which have a quantum property called spin that makes them act like little magnets. If we measure this spin for an electron, we'll always find it pointing in just one direction, or the opposite, up or down, say. Now we can imagine entangling two electrons so that their spins are always pointing in opposite directions. If electron one has a spin up, electron two must have a spin down, and vice versa. The two spins are said to be correlated. They are like a pair of gloves. If one is right-handed, the other must be left-handed. So now let's say we entangle the two electrons in this way and fire them in opposite directions. We don't know which of the pair is up and which one is down until we make a measurement. If we find that electron one is spin up, we know the spin of electron two must be down. This is not remarkable because we could do the same thing with the gloves. We could put one in a package and send it to Alice and the other to Bob. The moment Alice opens her package and finds the right-hand glove, she knows Bob must have the left-hand glove. The handedness of the gloves, like the spins of the electrons, is correlated. But there's a crucial difference in this analogy. The handedness of the gloves in the package was the same from the start. It never changed. It was always the right-hand glove that got sent to Alice. If someone had intercepted the parcel before Alice got it, that person would have seen that it was the right-handed glove. With entangled particles, that's not the case. Remember, all we did at the outset was ensure that the entanglement made them correlated so that their spins point in opposite directions. We didn't specify whether the spin-up electron is number one or number two. You might think, well, okay, it's obviously one or the other. It's just that we didn't know which was which until we measured one of them. 